Oh, hi. I almost didn't see you there. We have a lot of things going on in our heads. We put even less of them down on paper. Having all those ideas and thoughts bouncing around can get pretty overwhelming. We have to-do lists. We have hopes. We have dreams. We have secrets. We have failures. We have love. And we have loss. Ideas come and go, and feelings fade. How do you keep track of your feelings? How do you organize them? A great way to organize your thoughts and clear your mind is to write them down in a journal. To start a journal, you just need to know how to write. And probably read so you can refer to these journal entries later. To journal, you don't have to have good handwriting. You don't even have to necessarily write well, since you're the only person that's going to be reading your entries. All you have to do is want to write and just let the words flow. The first step in journaling, you need a journal. Step two, you need a writing utensil. I prefer to use pencils because if I make mistakes, I can erase them and start over. Step three in how to journal, you need to have a great place to write. Somewhere preferably quiet, well lit, dry. That's dry, but it's a little dark. The lighting's better, but that's a little wet, yeah. That's perfect. Well lit, dry, you're ready to go. The first journaling idea I want to share is to use it as a diary. You don't have to use it every day, or even every week, but I want you to speak to your journal as though I were a friend. Dear Diary, today I saw my crush at the gym. He was a little sweaty and gross, but... Part of me just wanted to go up to him and ask what kind of deodorant he uses. You might think you know yourself, but do you? Do you? Of course not. So the next idea I have is to use your journal for self-discovery. What is my favorite way to spend the day? Think, Lena, think. Think. I got it. Can't believe I didn't come up with this sooner. Let me make sure I ain't misspell nothing. And perfect. Positive self-talk isn't conceited, it's needed. Use your journal to write down the positive affirmations you have for yourself. I am the baddest woman alive. No one can run an 11 minute mile quite like I can. I literally sing so well when nobody's around. Mariah Carey who, oh, good. What else? What else? I binge watched Spongebob all 12 seasons in three days. Flex. The next idea I have is to use your journal for lists. I like to make inconceivably long to-do lists of things I could never possibly get done. And I've had my purge list ready since the first movie came out. You give it a try. Well, I am going on vacay later this month, eh? But I really don't know what to bring. Probably my bikini, definitely. Um, maybe my cover-up. Probably should bring a hairbrush. What else? Think. I got it, I got it. Couldn't forget them. The next idea I have is to journal from the perspective of someone else. I think this is a great exercise because you really begin to empathize with the feelings of others. Let's take a look. Now that I'm fully into character, Dear Diary, there's this kind of a weird girl that'd be looking at me when I'm at the gym, always so sweaty and gross. But, I mean, part of me just wants to go up to her and, you know, ask what kind of deodorant she uses. The last prompt I want to share with you all is journaling for problem solving. 
asking yourself a question and then getting all your thoughts out can be very therapeutic, if you will. What is my life's purpose? Think, Lena. Think, Lena. Thinking. It's hard. Oh my god. Of course. Of course. Oh, welcome back. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial on how to journal. It's a tool that I use every day in my own life to reduce anxiety, work through my depression, and really help to organize some of the ideas I have bouncing around this big brain of mine. I hope that you use journaling in your own life as a tool to use when you're feeling a bit anxious or you need someone to talk to. Let me know down in the comments if you decided to give any of these journaling ideas a try. I'll see you next time. Bye.